Hello there, I think we're live. Hi everybody, how are you doing? And welcome to my Zen Days. Uh, and welcome to all the new people as well. There's been so many people who've been sharing the posts, sharing the videos. Um, so it's lovely to have you here. I'm Nikki, I'm Nikki Thackeray. I am a wellbeing mentor, a meditation teacher, and I'm founder of my Zen Days, which is all about how to help us live a much calmer and happier life. So we teach all sorts of tools like mindset, meditation, um, mindfulness, really practical strategies that can help you to just live a much fuller and more fulfilled and happier and a calmer life. All the stuff that we really need right now as we're dealing with this crazy, crazy pandemic. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, today, today, I'm going to be talking to you um, and this is going to be of interest for you if you feel like this lockdown situation is really starting to drive you nuts. Um, because you're not alone, you're definitely not alone. And I've been having so many conversations with different people recently who feel like they're starting to lose the plot a bit and they feel like the wheels are starting to come off and they kind of got into, hi there, um, they've kind of come into the lockdown situation with a bit of a kind of attitude like I did, like maybe you did too, which is, you know, oh, well, this is new, you know, this is new, this is like, even, even though it's weird and it's sad and it's strange, it's still a little bit interesting because we haven't done it before. You know, so we've and we've also been having to get ourselves prepared in the best possible way. So getting our shopping in, making sure our parents are OK, making sure we've got the stuff we need for the kids. And so a lot of what's happened so far is that we've been kind of or in the initial stages, I should say, planning for how are we going to be able to get through this time? And then now that we're kind of like a couple of weeks in, you know, and we've been doing this series for like, you know, three weeks now. We're a couple of weeks in and we're like, really? Is this really it? And I'm not sure I'm coping that well at times. And um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Um, oh, two seconds. I'm just going to see if I can add my uh, microphone. I've got a super snazzy microphone there, which I forgot about. Um, but it helps because we put our videos onto YouTube. And so if you're not already subscribed on the YouTube channel, then you'd do us a favor if you could uh, hit subscribe and share it because it's brand new. Anyway, um, so hello, and hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Now I've put that microphone in that hasn't done anything dodgy. Just give me a little hello, yes. Let me know you're here. I've just noticed I look a little bit wild as well. <laughs> anyway, oh, there we go. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Jenny. It's lovely to have you here. Hello, ladies, and hello, gents, as well. I know we've got a lot of males um, in our gorgeous, gorgeous uh, community in my Zen days. So, so I'm talking today about um, if you feel like you're starting to go slightly mental and slightly crackers in this situation and um and i feel it too you know because certainly and i was just saying before you know when we first started getting into this lockdown situation it was all very new uh, marginally interesting and exciting um and we needed to do things we hadn't done before you know and and then obviously as usual the reality starts to kick in and we're like actually this is not that great actually everyone's doing my head in actually i just want to I'm sorry, Colin's just saying, make sure you've not tilted the mic. It hears from the front and not the top. Can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me okay. I do not want to sit and talk to myself. That should be all right. Hi, uh, Jen, just let me know if you can hear okay. Sorry for this, guys. I'm going to assume you can and let me know if there's any problem. Whatever. Okay. Right. Um... And so, because I know there's normally a delay, there's a delay between kind of the broadcast and then any comments that come through. So just so I'm not testing everyone's patience, which has already been massively tested in these crazy times, then I will get on with it. Uh, so yes, you can hear me. Thumbs up. Brilliant. Um, so, so yeah, if you feel like you're starting to rattle a bit under the pressure, like under the pressure and the wheels are starting to kind of rattle, I just want you to know there's nothing wrong with you you're not crazy you're not mental you're not losing the plot you're not a psychopath um 
it's 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 okay and it's a totally natural normal human reaction to this crazy situation that we're finding ourselves in so i cannot even tell you and hopefully this will make you feel better the amount of conversations i've had with people who've said i can't sleep like i just can't fall asleep properly or i can't you know if i wake up in the night i can't get back to sleep or people saying i can't stop eating like I'm, I've had, you know, 235 meals so far today, not me personally, not today, but on, on any other day, you know, we're averaging around about 11 or 12 meals per day because you're just here, you know, and there's just food, not, you know, we haven't stopped by, but we've got food in the fridge, we've got food in the cupboards. And you're kind of trying to entertain yourself as well and keep yourself going. So give me a hands up, give me a hands up um, if you, you know, if you're feeling this as well. And then the other thing that a lot of people have been saying is like, I've been drinking loads as well, like loads of wine. I've kind of already got a punch on for G&T and I've been just having more and more G&Ts. And so I'm not here to, I'm not here to judge at all. And but I am here to say, don't panic that, that there's something wrong with you, because this is a really, really normal reaction to this particular situation that we're in. So people are drinking too much, they're eating too much, they're getting ratty as hell. So if you feel as though you are like irritable, you know, and maybe argumentative, maybe having more arguments with people in your house, whether it's your other half or with your children, maybe you can see it in them. Maybe you can feel that they're getting really ratty and they're getting really frustrated and irritable too. And, and again, this is all normal. And I don't want you to, I don't want anyone sitting there going, oh God, we or I, you know, we in my house or, or just me is not dealing with this very well because you are, you really are dealing with this in the best way that anybody can. Are you being perfect? No. Am I being perfect? No, I'm ratty. I know I am, it, you know, you can sit there and meditate all day long. I'm still ratty because I haven't been through this particular situation before and I'm frustrated. And whilst, yes, I'm totally grateful for everybody who's out there doing what they need, you know, to, to keep us all going. So whether it's the NHS, the key workers, the people in the grocery shops, I'm massively, massively grateful to them. So I don't want to sit here like a princess and just sound like I'm whinging, but also the reality is that for all of us, whether you're out there or whether you're in here, it's a brand new situation that we're trying to deal with. And I've had people as well say, you know, I feel like, I feel like I haven't really got any right to be frustrated. I haven't got any right to be irritated because I'm not out there and I'm not doing what the NHS workers are doing. I'm not having to go to work. I'm just sitting safe in my house. So I haven't really got a right to feel the way that I feel, or I haven't lost anybody from coronavirus. So I haven't got a right to whinge about it. And you know, the truth is, the truth is, if this is the one of the strangest situations you've ever been through, if this is one of the biggest changes to your life you've ever had to make, then you've got every right in the world, every right, same as anybody else, to feel the way that you do. So don't compare. Don't compare how you feel with how you think you should feel or how anybody else might feel or other people have got it worse than you. Because you could sit there and do that all day long, but actually all you're doing is invalidating how you feel. And so that's the question that I want you to ask yourself and acknowledge for yourself as well is, is this one of the biggest things I've ever had to deal with? Yes. Is this one of the most disruptive things to my normal day to day life I've ever had to deal with? Yes. Is this situation causing me to feel really stressed, anxious, worried? Yes. And is there real reason, like good reason to feel like that? Yeah. Oh yeah, so I want you to know you're entirely justified to feel the way you do, even if there's, you know, you haven't lost someone from the coronavirus yet, even if you're not having to go out to work every single day, because we've all got a different situation. We're all dealing with a different set of circumstances on top of whatever you were dealing with in your life before this actually came along. So the first thing really is don't compare yourself to other people and stop comparing yourself to how you think you should be behaving and reacting in this situation, because honestly, it's just not gonna help you. Hey Lisa, oh, it's so lovely to have you here. 
Oh God, Jane, Sarah Jane Armstrong saying go OCD. Yeah, well, so what I want to do today is um, I've, I've been working this morning on compiling a list for you, okay? Which I'm going to be sharing after this. I'm not going to go through it today because I think it's probably going to, you know, would be here all day. Um, but what I've done is to create a list of top tips for how to stay sane okay so once we can get in, into our heads the fact that this is a really difficult situation you're dealing with it the very best way you can it's not perfect you're not perfect the people that you're living with aren't perfect the people that you work with aren't perfect no offense colin um you know but all of these sorts of things are not you're not in a situation where you are going to be at your very best you're not in the situation where you're going to be able to be shining, glowing, full of motivation, full of energy, full of, you know, let's make all wonderful things happen. This, I honestly think this isn't really the time for it. And there are some people on the internet as well, like on social media and things like that, who are all about, you know, this is your opportunity, launch your business, go for it, do something major, lose all the weight, you know, and, and kind of getting, getting you, getting people razzed up and riled up about, you know, I can kind of come out of this being Beyonce, you know, like after having had loads of time at home and that might work for some people. OK, and if it does work for you and it energizes you and motivates you and makes you feel good, then go for it. But if you're seeing all this, all this sort of message on social media and thinking, Shit, but I can't be arsed. Like, I haven't got energy. I haven't, don't feel motivated to do all that sort of stuff. And you start to feel rubbish about yourself. Then you really should come out of that and stop watching that. You don't need that shit in your life if you are not up for it. Okay? If it's working for you, great. If it's not, you really should unfollow or you should just push it to one side. Because in all of this, you really want to feel like you're being kind to yourself and being compassionate with yourself, which is where you see yourself in the situation and going, do you know what? It's really hard. Like it's a, it's a real struggle. It's really difficult. It is frustrating. It is worrying. It is stressful. And how can you actually make this easier for yourself? And that's the biggest question is how can you survive it? How can you make things comfortable? And how can you do so in a way where you're not adding shitloads of extra pressure onto what is already a really difficult pressure filled situation? So let me know if you're hearing me. Let me know, honestly, if you feel as though if you've got, <laughs> yeah, Colin's just saying, don't worry, there's no perfection illusion shattered. Well, Colin, I mean, you might have been very, very surprised to see that I'm not perfect either. Who knew? Um, but this is this is the thing. So if you if you're feeling a bit rubbish, if you're feeling like some of your habits are a bit uh, probably counterproductive. So if you are looking for some sort of relief some sort of numbing, some sort of pleasure from overindulging on things like food, sleep, maybe um, alcohol, you know, what I kind of thing that you're into. If you're overindulging on those, just give yourself a break. Take t take take a bit of a step back because you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to harm yourself. And actually, a lot of those things like if you eat too much or you drink too much or you sleep too much, it is actually going to exacerbate the problem because it's going to make you feel worse it's going to make you feel not as able to cope with everything that you've got to cope with at the minute but if you find if you're finding a little bit of pleasure or a little bit of relief or a little bit of comfort in those things then don't be so hard on yourself really don't be hard on yourself the trick here is to go this is hard it's going to last for a while how am i actually going to be able to get through it and i want to explain as well so there's a couple of things i want to explain why we feel the way that we do and also i'm going to like i said before not go into the full depth of um the tips but i'm going to send them i'm going to share them online um after this live because what i've done is to create um to, to create the top tips for how to stay sane right which you're gonna want to look through because this is going to keep your head right especially if you feel like you're starting to wobble and have a bit of a shake uh, have a bit of a funny situation okay um and the way that's broken down you've got the basics 
So what are the basic tips? This is all about nutrition, sleep, movement, breathing. Um, and then you've got the watch outs. So the watch outs are be careful about what you're consuming in terms of what you're feeding your mind, all of that shit on social media, all that idiot Donald Trump. Sorry if anyone's a fan, but I am not. And I watched him the other night and I was just wound up. I was really wound up because he didn't know what he was talking about. It was really frustrating. Um, and so you've got to be careful about what you're feeding your mind and what you're allowing into your mind. Tony Robbins always says you've got to stand guard. You've got to be the guard at the door of your mind. So what are you allowing in there? You're a bit like a bouncer. You've got to think of yourself as a bouncer um, and the big door. What's behind there is your mind and whoever you let in there, whatever you let in there is going to have an impact, a massive impact potentially on how you feel and how you're able to cope with your days, how you're able to live with your days, the decisions that you make, the moods that you have. So you've got to really be careful about what you're feeding your mind, what you're feeding your body. So there's the basics on the tips, there's the watch outs, and then there's also the way forward. So this is we're all about at my Zen days, all about your mindset, all about adopting and practicing positive mindset, optimism, which is just the belief that you can affect a positive change on the situation that you're in and the outcome based on what you think and what you do. So practicing positive mindset, practicing looking for good things. You've got to work doubly hard right now to look for the good things because there's so much bad. The danger is just living outside your front door, you know? So you need to actually spend some proper time, spend some proper time looking for, look out for what is good. Like look at the generosity of people, look at the goodness of people and the greatness of people who've really stepped up. Helpful neighbors, volunteers for the NHS. There's so much, there's so much good if you look for it. There's so much good there, but you're not gonna notice that in the first instance when you're feeling really stressed. So, so watch out for the tips because they're coming and I'll send them. Um, I keep saying I'll send them. I'm not going to send them to anybody. I might send them to Colin, but uh, I'll post them on the My Zen Days page. OK, um, and I wanted to explain to you finally about why we're feeling the way that we're feeling um, at the minute. And I know I talk about this stuff all of the time because I genuinely think that you need to understand how your mind works and how your body works in times of stress so that you can then understand what you need to do to counteract that, okay? So what's happening at the minute is that you are very much, and so am I, so everybody, and it's made worse because this is contagious, you know, anxiety and stress is contagious, just as much as COVID fricking 19. Um, but basically what's happening is that our stress response is uh, has been activated massively, um, and we're basically in this fight or flight mode so you've got two modes okay in your nervous system you've got your stress response your fight or flight which is like oh shit i'm in danger something's trying to kill me um or i'm in a burning building that kind of thing and i've got to run away and then the other mode is the relaxation response so that's when you are you know metaphorically lying on a sun lounger with a cocktail in your hand and the sun on your body feeling amazing right so you've got stress 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 and you've got relaxation response and the idea the plan the way it's meant to work is that um you would live in your relaxation response okay so this is where you live you live nice and cool feeling good you know with that cocktail in your hand this kind of thing and the sun on your face and you feel good everything's working well your mind's not overactive your breathing's nice and long and deep and that would be you living in your relaxation response, right? Happy days. And then what would happen is if suddenly, let's just say someone came and stole your cocktail, right? Which would be very stressful. Or there was a fire. Or there was like a tiger, you know, as in the days of old, who was running after you and wanted to eat you because they were hungry, right? So what would happen there is you would very quickly come out of the relaxation response and you go into stress response. And so what happens in the stress response is that it releases this cocktail of chemicals into your body. So it floods with adrenaline and cortisol. And what that does is it's getting your body ready for fight or flight. Like you're either going to have to run as fast as you can so that you can save your own life, 
or you're going to have to stay and fight the tiger or the person who's trying to steal your cocktail, right? Let me know if you're with me. Um, and so, uh, so, so what happens there is that there's sort of a a kind of process of different things that happen in your mind and in your body when you're in the stress response. So things like your pupils dilate so that you can see more of the danger that's around you. OK, you get shots of energy to your muscles so you're ready to literally fight or run away. And key processes in your body just stop because any processes that are like automatic, like say like digestion, Right, which is like working nicely when you're in the relaxation response, it just it just suddenly stops because it's not critical to your ability to run away or fight. Okay. So there's all you've got to understand there's all these different things that are happening in your body as a as a as a consequence of the stress response that's been triggered in your mind. Okay. And so what happens is in the ideal situation, you've got your living stress, the relaxation response, something stressful happens, all of those processes happen in your body, you then deal with the danger, the stress response shuts down, because you've either ran away, or you've fought and done what you needed to do. But when the danger's gone, the relaxation response goes back into, you know, you go back into that mode. And, and the relaxation response then comes and recovers all the damage that all the adrenaline, the cortisol did um, in your body and tells you that it's okay and your muscles can relax and it returns your breathing to normal, your blood pressure to normal, your heart rate to normal and all that kind of thing. That's how this thing should work. The problem though, is if you are in the situation that we are in and the the thing that's the danger isn't just that it's come you deal with it and it's gone this is a prolonged thing because this is taking us it's taking a long time for us to be able to get through and cope with and get over this pandemic so it requires more patience on our part but it also means we need to understand that we're basically living in this constant state of fight or flight and it's one thing, as I always say, it's one thing to understand that that's what's happening. It, and, and it's the next thing, more important thing, is that you learn how to calm that. You can calm yourself. You really can. And you can learn to calm your mind and you can learn to settle yourself. The biggest thing is with conscious breathing. The biggest thing is with conscious breathing because that's right under your control. And the key is to be spending twice as long on the out breath as you do on the in breath, which is why I'm always teaching the four, seven, eight breathing exercise, which is the relaxing breath. And this is literally scientifically proven stuff. This will basically accelerate the coming back, you know, and the, the, the dominance of the relaxation response over the stress response. If you can practice conscious breathing. But you can't do it when you're in a panicky situation and expect it to work. It's a practice. And so you have to practice every day and you have to practice a couple of times a day because the more you practice this thing, the easier it, it is for your body and your mind to do what it is then accustomed to do. If that makes sense. So if you want to suddenly relax, it's much better that you've got this conscious breathing exercise that you know works for you and you understand why it works and you can whip that out in times where you're feeling stressed and just be able to soothe yourself. This is all about self-soothing and, and relaxing yourself. And so you're able to do that and that's much easier for you to do compared to if you're in prop panic mode and I'm suddenly trying to teach you, you know, a breathing exercise, it's just not gonna work. And it is a tool, it's not, you know, it, it, it is a tool. Lisa's just saying, and I know because I've heard from Lisa um, about this before, the 478 breathing, which we teach in Meditation and Me, is um, it's a lifesaver. It really is. And you can teach it to your family, you can teach it to your friends. And this is what's really going to help you just to, to learn how to relax yourself, learn how to consciously relax. Um, so understand that this, this is what's happening. This, so we are like living in this constant state of anxiety at the moment because the danger's there, it's real. You're not being crazy by being worried and being anxious about it. It's normal because the threat is very real. Um, but actually what, what you need to do is to find ways, find your way 
of what can you do to try to soothe yourself? What can you do to try to relax yourself? And, and it's hard, isn't it? Because at the minute, you know, we, we're feeling like that. So we've got all this adrenaline cortisol being released and we feel like we want to fight or run away. And actually you're being told to just stay in. You're being told to stay in. So maybe the normal things that you'd want to do, which is to go for multiple runs on a day or go to the shops or do whatever you might, you can't really do that. You can't do that anymore. So that is why, that is why we're feeling the way that we feel. So if you're feeling like, you know, you're starting to go a bit nuts. If you're bursting out laughing hysterically for no apparent reason, if you find yourself talking a lot slower or a lot faster than you normally would, if you find yourself like, I saw somebody the other day and put this post on Facebook saying, I'm going to start to get a tan from the fridge light for the amount of times that I'm opening the fridge. Um, but if you feel like you're eating too much, if you feel like you're drinking too much, if you feel like you're sleeping too much or you can't sleep, all of those things, you can deal with them. There are things that you can do that would address all of those different things. But I want you to know, though, that instead of just sitting and thinking you yourself are going crazy or you yourself are not dealing with this situation in the right way or in the best way or as well as somebody else, then please, please, I think that's my biggest message to you today is just take that pressure off yourself. You don't need it. You need to do whatever you need to do to get through this particular time. It's a tough time. It's a challenging time. We haven't gone through it before. And I can share all the tips in the world with you. And I think that they are really good tips. Um, you know, but you know you. You know you and what works for you and what's going to help you to stay sane. So just ask yourself, what is the th well, you know, what are the things that I need to do? But hopefully you're going to find some really interesting and really useful tips in the full list, which I will post very soon. Let me just take a quick look at the comments. And thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, so Lisa's saying, Will and I have got our little Zen Den meditation daily, which really helps. Uh, and a tweaked routine is saving us mentally. Yep, 100%, Lisa. And I love the fact that you've got your Zen done um, and that Will's doing it. It's incredible. Sarah, yoga helps me relax and singing. Oh, singing. You're putting crazy ideas in my head now. I want to start singing. I had ideas about wanting to join a choir and I wish I had. Finding it hard to be distant from my mum who struggles with mental health. I'm going to send her your links for, for the online. Oh, brilliant. Please do. Um, there's there's tons of free resources on myzendays.com. Um, so there's the Zen Seekers newsletter. There's the Monday morning mantra, which is going to get you fired up at six o'clock every mo Monday morning. Um, there's the kickstart, uh, there's the meditation course, which is amazing. And it's half price at the minute because we wanted to, um, to, to do something in response to coronavirus and make sure that more people um, can get these tools into their hands and into their heads because it literally is life changing. Um, and Jenny's saying, loving the series. I'll be working on my vision board this afternoon. Yoga, Pilates and boot camp, keeping busy. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, I did a vision board. I did a session on the uh, vision board the other day. So that was, I don't know what series we're on now. Seven? Um, so episode six was, oh, no, actually I might have, I think I've got that wrong. I think it was episode seven was the vision board. And uh, that is all about having some creative fun and not putting pressure on yourself and going, I must come out of this being a brand new person, must be better. It's not that. This is about going, now that I have a little bit more time and now that I've got a shit ton pile of magazines that I never got around to read, I never got around to have a look at the pretty pictures in, let's have a bit of time sitting and going through and picking some stuff that really inspires me you know really inspires me for what i want my life to be like afterwards you know and really start to get the creative juices flowing um so so with that i'm gonna leave you hey have have a um have a really happy weekend oh jen's saying as well in the meditation of course so jen was uh one of our meditation and me students 
um, and loved it and got loads out of it. And actually loads of our meditation students have been in touch as well to say, thank God that I learned how to meditate when I did, as in before this, because it's made the world of difference. And there was someone last night got in touch with me as well, talking about the future self meditation and saying, she said, I'll never forget it. And it literally changed everything um about the direction you know i was going in my life uh, and, and it did for me too you know i absolutely love this stuff it's incredible meditation honestly if you if you're looking for a way of really calming your nervous system and really having a life of much less stress and more confidence in yourself to just be you um then that's definitely the course for you so on, on that on that last plug i'm gonna let you go and have a nice rest of your friday and I'm going to put my entire long list of 20 tips on to the page. So it's five, five basics, five watch outs and 10 ways to move forward. Um, so I really hope that they help. So I will look forward to seeing you. Um, well, Lisa, meditation has enabled me to cope and will just get in. Um, I love that. OK, have a fabulous weekend and I will see you on Monday. Take care. Bye.